My name is Doug Parker, host of Cruise Radio, and this is a tour of Carnival Miracle. Before we get to the tour, if you want to see more of this content, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. All right, so on to Carnival Miracle. She is a Spirit class ship. She was launched in 2003. Actually, she was christened right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, 963 feet long, 2,124 guests, and she is 88,500 gross registered tons. As far as the cabins, they have six grand suites, 44 balcony suites, 632 balcony cabins, 103 ocean view cabins, and 277 interior cabins. We're going to start the tour on deck number one. So this is a different class of ship than the ones we're used to. Um, again, the theater on like the other spirit class ships, I believe we've done a tour of Carnival Pride down here in the front of the ship on deck one, which is the Riviera deck. So deck one forward is where you'll find the Mad Hatter's Ball Lounge. Really cool. Alice in Wonderland vibe here with the cards on the wall. You have the rabbit and the Mad Hatter along the um, sides of the theater. Also, this is where you're going to find the Punchliner Comedy Club, so you don't have to walk all the way to the back of the ship to catch the comedy show. You can just go right here to deck one forward. Aside from the staterooms, not much else on deck number one, except um, it's a two-level disco on the back of the ship, and that goes from deck one to deck two. Really interesting, too. It's called Dr. Frankenstein's Lab Dance Club, and we'll get to that in just a couple of moments. Going up to deck number two forward that's going to be the start of the theater of course the main show lounge is on deck two three and four on carnival miracle as in all of these spirit class ships and that's called the phantom lounge as you look down from the upper decks here, you can see that most of the seating is on the uh, third and fourth deck and limited seating on the bottom. So more toward, like a fantasy class ship as far as seating goes when you're down there on the main floor. And there seems to be more seats up on the decks three and four. As far as obstructions go, there are a couple of brass poles in here, so think about that before you want to sit down and check out a show. Um, maybe get to the show at about 20 minutes early. Of course, the bottom level, deck number two, goes, uh, goes the quickest and then fills into deck three and deck four. Leaving the show theater on deck two and heading aft, you're going to come across the Joker card room first. A little place to play some cards on sea days and a quiet sitting room in there. And then you're going to come up to the Fountainhead Cafe, a little fountain in there. It wasn't operational when I was on board, but there is two staircases that go up to deck number three from deck two. So behind those staircases, the Red Frog Pub sits. Red Frog Pub seems a little bit bigger on these ships, the Spirit Class ships, compared to, say, the Red Frog Pub on Carnival Freedom, or even the newer pubs, like on the Vista Class ships. And I could be wrong on that, but it just seems like the band area is right here and this big open layout of tons of seating and, of course, the bar. No outside area on this, so the Red Frog Pub is only an inside venue, no lanai to sit out there and drink on. Making your way back from the Red Frog Pub, you're going to come across the Skybox Sports Bar. That, of course, is the sports bar connected to the casino. No smoking in the Skybox Sports Bar, but there is that 24-hour ticker that has up to the minute. Sports scores, also a lot of TVs in here as well. I noticed even more TVs, it seemed, than other Red Frog or uh, other Skybox Sports Bars I've been in in the past. Mr. Lucky's Casino is right behind the Skybox Sports Bar or just aft of it. The Casino Bar is right when you walk into the casino. So normally, if you're walking forward to aft, the Casino Bar is typically on the aft end of the casino. This one is more forward. Um, typical slot machines in here, a lot of tables. Of course, there is that open space to access the casino from the Skybox Sports Bar. The casino did seem to be a little smoky on this ship. It wasn't bad, wasn't overpowering, but when I walked through there, there was was no one in the casino, maybe one person smoking at the uh, at the bar, but it had a pretty good smoke smell to it. And I guess now I have to say nothing against smokers because people tell me that I treat smokers like a pariah, which I don't. I'm just kind of being informative. If you're sensitive to smoke, you might want to bypass the casino by going on to deck number one, which is the Riviera deck. That's where the passenger cabins are. Or go up to deck number three right there along that exterior promenade where the fun shops are. You can bypass the casino, not have to deal with smoke. And then the smokers don't have to say I treat them like a pariah. Everyone's happy. All right, so let's move on here. Behind the casino is the atrium. So normally on Carnival Ships, the atrium and then the casino this flopped it's the casino and then atrium internet cafe is in this area too as well as guest services in the shore excursions desk 
something about this class of ship I really, really like. I think it's just the layout, the multi-level promenade. Instead of just having one long one going from front to back, it's kind of broken up into two different promenades as well as the secret promenade, Gatsby's Garden Interior Promenade, that's what it's called. And again, I missed it, so it must be a secret promenade because I've been on Carnival Pride and Carnival Miracle, and I haven't seen it. So I asked one of my friends, where is it? I cannot find it. And she sent me a photo, so this is what it looks like. I didn't get a video here because I suck and I couldn't find it. But apparently it's deck three forward, just either side of the main theater, the Phantom Lounge. Take a little stroll from the atrium heading aft. You'll come to the Alchemy Bar, probably one of the largest Alchemy Bars at sea. You can see the big oval here where the bar, or half oval, I should say, where the bartender sits behind. And then you have a lot of seating just around that. So you have little booth areas, benches, and ta uh, tables and chairs. So a lot of space in this Alchemy Bar. You could tell this space really when they built this, or I guess uh, they refitted this ship with the Alchemy Bar, you could tell it was going to be really popular on this class of vessel. Now behind the Alchemy Bar is the main dining room, but before you get to the main dining room, there is Dr. Frankenstein's Lab Dance Club. This thing has a massive 15 foot long replica Frankenstein in here. And I was filming for this video and I backed into him. I totally didn't see him until I hit him and it scared the heck out of me. I almost dropped the camera actually because I did scream, I'll be honest with you. But yeah, it was crazy. Two deck dance club in here. Um, the bar is up on deck number two. Deck number one is going to be just kind of the dance floor and some seating around the dance floor. I have not seen this space come to life at nighttime, but by the lights and the Frankenstein and all that, it seems like a really cool cool room. There is only one main dining room on these Carnival Spirit class ships, so that's Carnival Spirit, Carnival Miracle, and Carnival Pride. This one, though, probably pops the most out of any Carnival ship I've been on. I haven't been on every single one, but I've probably been on around 20 of them by now. And just like the big purple grapes hanging from the ceiling, the statues in here, just the, the attention to detail that the entertainment architect did when he designed this space, which was Joe Farkas. Joe is a rock star when it comes to designing cruise ships. Both dining programs are held in here, so you'll have traditional dining, which is the 6 o'clock and 8.15 dining. Also, the anytime dining, somewhere between 6 and 9, you show up and eat whenever you want to, um, depending on how many people are eating at the same time you want to, depends on how long you'll have to wait to eat when you have any time dining. I've heard good and bad. Going up to deck number three in the main dining room, more purple, more statues, and leaving the main dining room, there's actually a little promenade out here where you can walk the span of the ship on deck number three. A good place to get some fresh air after dinner. After dinner, if you decide to walk inside of the ship, you're going to go forward and go through the Gotham Lounge. There's a piano in here and just a big open bar type chill area. Um, City Conference Room going to be to your left-hand side. Then you're going to walk forward and you're going to go through the photo gallery. So the photo gallery hugs the atrium on both the port and starboard side. Has the portraits from the night before. Also, you know what they sell in here? They sell disposable cameras. So the green rectangle cameras that I haven't seen since probably the early 2000s, maybe late 90s that we always used to use. They do sell those in here for like $14.95. And I believe they'll even develop the photos on board. So good for Carnival for embracing the throwback cameras on Carnival Miracle. Walking forward from the atrium in the photo gallery, we're going to go through the Yellow Brick Road. Uh, yep, that's going to be the fun shops. You can get your logo gear through here. Also buy yourself a watch. I highly suggest not to buy a watch, but if you want to buy a watch or some jewelry, you can do that. Also, you have Cherry on Top up here. That's the specialty store with all the candies. You can buy as many gummy worms or gummy bears or chocolates as you'd like. Also, the flowers there if you want to buy yourself a flower or your loved one a flower for a formal night or just because you're a nice person. They also sell bottles of nice fancy champagne in here as well. Just ahead of the fun shop little strip mall here, you have an area where you could sin, you can repent, you can read. They have Sam's Piano Bar, a pretty big piano bar with a lot of mirrors along the wall, so it looks bigger than it really is. And then next to the piano bar is the chapel, which Carnival is slowly... I don't want to say phasing the chapels out, but I guess they are, right? They made the chapel on Carnival Pride a crafts room for their Michaels partnership. I'm sure people appreciated that. And then next to that is the Raven Library. You could tell in the library here they used to have like computer terminals. That's now part of the Internet Cafe, which is down on deck number two. So now just more of uh, some books to read, to borrow, you know, leave one, take one kind of thing. Also a good place to play some board games during sea days in here. 
Leaving the library, you'll find those double staircases. That'll go down from deck number three to deck number two. That's where the Red Frog Pub is, the coffee shop, Skybox Sports Bar, Casino, and all that. So you can use this staircase here to transit between deck two and deck three. Can't go any higher or any lower on this area, but you can at the forward, mid, and aft elevators on the ship. And speaking of the elevators, which I haven't mentioned yet, there are three banks of elevators, forward, mid, and aft, and there's four in the front, four in the middle, and four in the back, but there are also three glass elevators in the middle section, you know, those famous glass um, elevators going through the Carnival Atrium, so you're actually going to have seven elevators in the midship part of Carnival America. And then forward of here is the mid-deck of the Phantom Main Lounge. That's the show theater. Of course, you'll also find that Secret Gadsby's Garden interior promenade, which I haven't seemed to find yet, but that's located up here. So if you find it or if you utilize it, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how hard it is to find. I could have always asked someone. I know that. So just chalk it up to me being stubborn. Deck number four forward is we're going to find the cheap seats of the Phantom Main Lounge. Also, just ahead of the Phantom Lounge is the Warehouse Video Arcade and the Circle C. And then going up one deck to deck number five forward, that's going to be Camp Ocean. So all the kids programming held up here on decks four and five forward. A lot of staterooms happening on these next few decks. So deck four, deck five, deck six, deck seven, and deck eight. All staterooms, you have those aft balcony staterooms back here. Some balcony cabins, some ocean view cabins, interiors, a little this, a little that. It's all happening right here in the midsection of this ship. Up on deck number nine, that's where you're going to find Spa Carnival. Also the pools. I say pools because, yes, there are three pools on the main deck here. More on that in just a moment. The spa, though, typical spa, so the fitness center located all the way forward. So when you enter spa, uh, spa Carnival, what you're going to do is you'll have the reception desk, and then men are going to go to the left-hand side and ladies to the right-hand side, and you'll go through your respected passageways or through the locker room into the fitness center. If you're looking for those sauna and steam rooms, also located uh, not co-ed, so men, you have your own, and ladies, you have your own on your side. And then you have the fitness center. So the fitness center... What I like about this place is that they have a whirlpool in the fitness center. Kind of archaic now because it seems like Carnival is taking these fitness center whirlpools out and putting aerobic studios in. But this one still does have a whirlpool within the fitness center. Also plenty of equipment in here to get your workout on. Out to the main Lido deck, you'll find two different pools. You'll find a forward and aft Lido pool. So I say forward and aft, but they're probably 50 feet from each other. And there's an Odyssey bar, a big bar connecting the two. As of April 2019, this ship has not underwent Fun Ship 2.0. So there's no Guy's Burger on here, no Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, um, no Blue Iguana Cantina or Red Frog Rum Bar either. It does have the Red Frog Pub, which makes me wonder why they didn't just throw a Guy's Burger on here. Maybe something with licensing. I really don't know. But this ship is expected to go through a major refurb here within the next year, and hopefully we will see that. But anyway, two pools out here. Both pools do have a whirlpool within the pool. Then just aft of here is the Horatio's Lido Restaurant. That's going to have your Asian Corner, your Taste of Nations, Deli, Buffet. Can't remember if there was sushi here or not. I know there was sushi down on deck number two outside the Skybox. Um, the pizza area is in here, also the salad bar, and quite a few drink stations in here as well. Deck 9 aft is the Serenity area on Carnival Miracle. So you're going to find your pool back here, also your whirlpool. Again, this area is Serenity, so adults only, no kids allowed. A big bar that spans pretty much from port to starboard back here. Plenty of shade, uh, loungers, you have clamshells, hammocks. This right here, this might be my favorite, well, it already is my favorite class of ship, but it might be my favorite Serenity out of all the ships I've sailed just because of the openness and the amount of space Carnival dedicated for the adult section on this Spirit class ship. Up on deck number 10 is the sun deck. More clamshells up here that kind of carry over from Serenity. Also, the slide ends down here. If you want to start to slide, you go up to deck number 11 and climb the little platform. Uh, only one slide on Carnival Miracle. And it's just your basic, typical cruise ship water slide. No bells and whistles on this one. On deck 10, you will find a Nick and Nora Steakhouse midship. So this steakhouse is actually, so it's in a cool location. It's underneath or built inside of the funnel. It's two decks. So it's deck number 10 and deck number 11. And you're in this big, I guess you're sitting under the funnel in this big atrium type setting. Very red if you're in here during the day. At nighttime, probably not so much because there's no sun going through the, the red funnel. But $38 as of April 2019. And you get to have a typical steakhouse meal. But under 
underneath the funnel and looking down or peering down into the atrium. But you won't hear any atrium noise from the atrium bar because that's down there on deck number two. And the steakhouse is on deck number 10 and 11. Deck number 11 forward is the sports deck. That's going to be where you're going to find your jogging track. Also, the basketball court is up here in the mini golf course up here in the forward part of deck number 11. That will about do it for our tour of Carnival Miracle. Just a lot of unique spaces on this ship. A lot of stairs, a lot of passageways, a lot of places to escape the crowds. Do love the layout of this ship. I've said it before and I'm going to keep saying it because you can always escape the crowds one way or another, whether it's the promenade on deck number three, the outdoor space, or up here at the top of the ship, you have just lounging areas with no one around. If you like this video and you'd like to see more cruise ship tours, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. You are the reason why I make these videos. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio. Find the Cruise Radio podcast in the Cruise Radio daily news briefs wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. What do you think about Carnival Miracle or the Carnival Spirit class in general? Do you like it? Is it your favorite class ship? Let me know in the comments below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching.